and sometimes they hit the boat uh, with such a force that the sound which uh, I hear in the cabin is it's so loud that I think wow it was it was like like someone uh, hit with the uh, with the brick you know this is the adventure sports podcast I'm trying to help you find adventure every day in any stage of life you're going to hear from explorers adventurers business owners and anyone living their life a little more out of the box than usual Hey folks, hope you had a good weekend. You're going to hear a lot of background noise. I got my dogs, my buddy Paul here, and the windows open. So you're going to hear some crickets, some dogs whining. Um, So this isn't a typical intro. Speaking of which, this isn't a typical adventure we're talking about. Uh, Carlos Bordelis is trying to navigate, not trying, he's actually doing it. He's navigating the world via human power, and he's doing it in sections. You know, he's not some guy with a ton of money. Uh, he, he he does what he can, g- goes home, works, saves up money, and does it again. But he travels for months and months at a time, if not years or two years. Um, and some of the things he's done to circumnavigate the globe is uh, he spent 60 days on rollerblades, cycling, uh, ro- rollerblading across Europe, bicycling across part of Europe, um, skiing in the Arctic Circle, uh, he's making his way by rowboat and cycling kind of around near the equator. And right now, he just landed in Papua New Guinea. And we're interviewing him raw, like at a mechanic shop as he's getting something fixed. And uh, it's just, he's raw. He's on the adventure right now. It's amazing. He's been listening to the show the whole way across the Pacific Ocean from Lima all the way to Papua New Guinea. And he's just a great guy. He really, really was a joy to talk to you, and I hope you enjoy it. His project is called Board of Borders. You can check out boardofborders.com, see what he's done, see who he is, and how he pays for things, as well as the cause that he's doing all this for. encourage you to check it out. All that's in the show notes. Today's sponsors, CS Instant Coffee, the makers of 100% Arabica coffee that's made in little packages that you can take with you in the backcountry on a boat, uh, make with you anywhere as well as Athletic Brewing, the makers of the world's best non-alcoholic craft beer. All right, let's get into today's episode. Where exactly are you right now? So it is a north uh, eastern part of uh Papua New Guinea province, Madang, uh, well, not a village, it's a kind of a city, but uh, yeah, <laughs> really difficult to call this a city, but it's, uh, here's some, something around like 600,000 inhabitants, so it was, wow. it's a, quite a big place, but those guys are living somewhere somewhere around, there is some small islands around, so... At least I I I'm staying in one um, uh, secure place where is like 24 hours uh, security and because well there is a like high crime but at the same time when I arrived I understood that the same law of traveling around is working also here like 99 percent of the people are kind nice welcoming friendly. And then there is one percent of just just some jerks who, who ruins the yeah the impression of all country. But uh, up to now, only good experience, and uh, everyone is friendly and and nice to me. So <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> man. Like, how how long do you think you're gonna spend there? Uh, right now, uh, I thought to stay like uh, just one week. I already ar- I arrived uh, something around four days ago. But uh, there is this issue with the satellite phone because um, uh, I have one phone which I use for uh, communication with the media uh, back in my country. And at the same time, I, go, I get some like weather forecasts, some advices from, from my, 
voluntary friends who who help me with the like i don't have like a professional uh weatherman or something i have a friend who is a sailor and he he have sailed across the pacific and he knows something more about this thing and uh and he just uh checks the weather and um and then i get uh updates on my satellite phone so that's uh, like a crucial crucial equipment so I need to wait replacement for that because one week ago uh, before I arrived here on the dang, my phone just gave out, I think, antenna or something. And here's nobody who have who who, who has some skills to fix it. I don't know how to fix it myself. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's kind of important. And I found some uh, solution uh, from Australia, whereas my... Uh, friends who who can uh, who could just uh, send me the use it phone um, just to use it for a couple of months so yeah <laughs> just really waiting for that now at the DHL so wow you you never know what's gonna what's gonna happen when you go on an adventure right <laughs> well yeah and usually usually you take some backups uh, and I do have a almost. Uh, item i have uh, even i have like a spare water maker but uh, i don't i didn't had like a separate like a additional satellite phone uh so yeah <laughs> wow it's it, so y- you are in papua new guinea because you rode there from from peru correct uh that's correct yeah well well this this uh, story like requires some backtracking yes, because yes. Uh, it, it's part of a much bigger adventure. Start or, or <laughs> I don't know, have we started already or I don't know. I, I'll uh, tell you what, yeah, we 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 start the interview. I, I'll give a official intro after um, when I record when I go to edit the the video or uh, the episode. So I yeah. want to hear you know how you got to this point and basically. Um, you know, P- I mentioned in the intro, Board of Borders is, is your uh, kind of your expedition, your overall, the, the, the bigger theme of what you're doing. And it came out of um, you wanting to do something more with your life. Do you, do you mind taking us back to, to what you were doing before all this and then essentially how you got to where you are now? Oh, yeah. Let's let's do that, all for right. example. Cool. Basically, all this uh, started, the uh, Board of Borders started in 2013. Finally, I decided and I made some, not only decisions, but uh, also some practical things to move forward. Before that, uh, I was working in a recycling company uh, as a, in a research and development. And also, I was in charge of one recycling facility. In my country, in Latvia, that's northeastern Europe, and mm-hmm. uh, that was a job which actually I was enjoying because it uh, gives uh, some more added value uh, to the nature, to environment around you. Not only that someone pays you salary every month, but also some some added value, and that was important for me. So, but uh, with Every uh, vacations, what I get <laughs> as my background is climbing. I, I didn't had any problems to uh, to have an idea. It's like, oh, where should I go on my vacation? That was always like I went to climb some mountains, some uh, frozen waterfalls, some rock faces. Uh, always uh, when I came back from those trips, I had an idea. Oh, how I could prolong that thing you know how i could how i could just uh, change that because two weeks three weeks feel like so alive feel full of juice and then i'm back at work but even though the work uh, was was uh, also interesting i was uh, more focused on my priorities and that was like i decided to live in adventure and how i could do that and that was like a big question for me and Actually, I went to one uh, climbing meet in the UK that was a uh, mountaineering council uh, organized event. So, yeah, I heard the story of uh, Nick Bullock. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly, but he's a climber from UK. And uh, his book came out that year, Echos, uh, One Climber's One Climber's Hard Road to Freedom. 
Uh, and I heard him speak on that event, and after that, I was just like blown away. I had so much inspiration from him, and uh, I thought, no, I have to do something with, with my life too. And uh, if I want to live in adventure, bought his book, and I was reading his book. I already kind of made decision that I will quit my job. I will start to go on adventures but i was kind of let's say afraid because uh, this decision was so important because it it means that uh, i will change completely my life that's why i read this book very very slowly because i knew what kind of decision i will make by the end of that book yeah when i finished the book i was already planning uh, my trip across uh, europe on roller skates it's a kind of a mixed uh, thing like roller skates and roller skis so that was my first big adventure across europe uh, for uh, 60 days every day uh, roller skiing about 100 kilometers that was a cool trip because my friends were following me with the camper van they did cooking they did driving they did communicate they communicate with the media and posted uh, on socials and they supported me uh, cheering up and that was really cool trip and that was from north of uh, Norway to south of uh, Spain uh, so from North Cape to Gibraltar a bit more than 6,000 kilometers in uh, 60 days. Ah, that was just amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, and then just step by step, uh, one project full next project. Eventually, um, I end up uh, planning the trip uh, around the world by human power. Uh, so, I'm not using any sail or any motor to move myself forward. So in 2016, uh, I rode with my friend uh, from Africa, uh, from Namibia to Brazil. Oh, that was 142 days. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we planned it actually for 100 days. And uh, so it ended up like uh, 42 days uh, uh, longer and slower. So we had, uh, we had some problems, some health issues and... Uh, uh, like actually quite severe and when I look back now to that adventure sometimes I even thought like well how we actually get through that and uh, yeah it's um, it, there is a nice movie uh, I like to share my adventures uh, afterwards so I I took a uh, nice footage and and some of my friends helped me with the uh, movie editing yeah there's a movie called touched by the ocean that's kind of uh, essence of uh, that adventure all that story like how we how we started by just like googling uh, that was actually how I started yeah I googled how to row an ocean that was uh, around four years ago so I'm not a sailor I'm not a, like a professional athlete but I didn't know it anything about that but I think nobody knows anything about something before he learns that and uh, and so I just yeah I just started from from zero and um, and uh, started to learn about all the navigation and uh, about the boats and <laughs> what kind of food we need on the boat and etc. And also, of course, I know the listeners are listening uh, to this now and thinking, okay, okay, man, but where did you get the money, you know? <laughs> that, that's always a big question. How do people pay for it? Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's uh, there is no like magic stick. I don't have a magic stick that is just I can just wave and 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 then the money appears. Uh, right. That's just uh, the the same as I think uh, all of uh, adventurers have done who who has some sponsorship. They start with the smaller projects. They build some portfolio. Uh, they build some credibility just slowly step by step with each project you can you can move forward and attract bigger and bigger companies so even though like my, my for example uh, my project is mostly known uh, to be honest just in my country and we are 1.8 million people there so you can imagine those are smaller markets for the big companies uh, and uh, smaller markets for everything i kind of found the solution for this i ask for 
really small money like but i asked to a lot of companies so i don't have like anchor sponsors but i have like 40 companies who support with some uh, small things or uh, for them maybe it's not uh, a lot of uh, it's a big budget for me and uh, if i put all that all those 40 supporters together then it's it can it, it, it can be it can be done so so yeah that's that's kind of my solution to that and but uh, yeah it's uh, always uh, like a full time work when i'm back from brazil because i planned to do that in a couple of stages so first stage was to cross south atlantic then i came back to my country for one year uh, when i gathered uh, the funds made documentary and uh, shared the story with a lot of people <laughs> and then uh, went back to brazil to continue so it took me like one year to restart uh, myself and <laughs> my squeezed budget uh, and then i could go back and and continue so in 2018 january i uh, went back to brazil uh, to continue the journey uh, with the tandem bicycle uh so uh, i i was uh, teamed up with my friend uh that time she was my girlfriend and uh, we planned this trip together that we will continue also further after crossing the south america that we will continue to row together with uh with this rowing boat across the pacific but uh, well uh, when we crossed the uh, south america she was done with the big trip she said that uh, she she wants to do something else in her life and uh, she has some other priorities so she went back from Lima she went back to Europe yeah I was I was there my boat was there and I had all food for two people for uh, enough enough to reach uh, Asia go for that <laughs> actually I couldn't I couldn't wait to be on the ocean uh, most of those uh, adventure people before big trips the the preparation part is like just so consuming you are you're so tired that you just want to go out and <laughs> and recharge yourself with all the nature power so right. that's what i was waiting for really and in, in lima when i was about to leave uh, so i had preparation for uh i don't know a couple of weeks there and uh so when I finally took off from there, uh, 2018, 14 of July, I was just so happy that I, I rode for a couple of days and then I knew that I will be off the coast of the main uh, shipping lines and I will be able to sleep. <laughs> so for a couple of days, uh, I was just, uh, you know, chilling out uh, the enjoying ocean. There was really uh, strong winds, big waves. But uh, apart from that, I was lucky because those waves and the wind was pushing me westwards so the right direction and i was just i was just happy i was just so you you went out on your own what was it hard to navigate the boat by yourself so that was something new which because atlantic we did with my, i did with my friend and uh, the schedule on the boat when you are when there's two uh, rowers uh you do like two hour shifts two hours rowing one is rowing other one is resting for two hours sleeping eating uh, i don't know crying or, or laughing or calling mom <laughs> and uh so each two hours you change the shifts and uh but when you um, do it solo uh it's a bit different and uh, you basically you use all the sunlight daylight uh what you what you have so you wake up early just i wake up a, a bit before the sun comes up so at five o'clock uh, uh not depends on the uh on the time zone but uh around five or six o'clock in the morning i row for uh, about two hours then i eat breakfast then i row for tw uh, four hours then i eat lunch and uh, then i row for six or seven hours and uh, then I eat something, a little bit, not really heavy dinner, but, uh, and then I go to sleep. So it means like, uh, just when the sun goes down, I also, I also switch, uh, switch off. Uh, so, 
a little bit difficult uh, in terms of that uh, there is um, there is a time when no one is like uh, on the watch uh, on the boat and no one is balancing the boat but at the same time the boat is equipped with uh, equipment uh, which can detect uh, the big ships uh, the big tankers and it's quite uh, important because when 330 meters tanker uh, that's like a stadium, you know, just six-story building uh, going to your direction. That's scary. Yeah, quite scary, but uh, at the same time, uh, I, I always uh, call them on the radio, so uh, so I communicate with those big ships, and uh, there, there have been situations when they say, but where? We don't see you, where you are out there. I said, I'm really small boat, really low, uh, really close to the water line, so you won't be able to see me. Just just check my position on on this radar. From time to time, I even had to ask uh, to change their course. And even though it's a 330 meters uh, tanker, like with the very important uh, cargoes, they change the course and they give away to a small rowing boat. And uh, and so they are very polite, and I'm very grateful for that. So. Yeah, w once there was a nice chat between uh, me and the tanker, and when I reached out to them, there was they, there was like they they came back to me like, really, uh, is that correct? The rowing boat? <laughs> so, <laughs> that was that was fun. But in Atlantic uh, in Atlantic Ocean, we had um, we had encounters with those big ships. Uh, we had, uh, as I said back then, we had health problems, and we even were running out uh, on some medicines and uh, and some vitamins. So we asked whether it's possible for them to stop to stop that tanker and uh, support us with uh, with some uh, some medicines. Those big ships, they just, well, it took some time for them to stop because they, uh, even even if they start to, to this process of, of stopping, it takes some time. And then, then we were approaching closer and uh, they lowered down by the ropes uh, some, uh, some bags with, uh, with some fresh uh, like apples and uh, grapefruits and oranges and that just blew, <laughs> blew our minds off. But that was in Atlantic, and we even we even hit the one tanker when we were uh, when we were so close to big ship. But all good, the tanker didn't sunk. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys didn't either, I assume. Yeah, that's uh, everything is on the movie. It's uh, quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> So we want to thank our sponsor, Athletic Brewing, for promoting a healthy lifestyle through making some of the world's best non-alcoholic craft beer. They make excellent tasting NA for healthy, active, modern adults. They use certified all-organic grains, and each can of non-alcoholic beer is only between 50 and 70 calories. They have IPA, golden ale, stouts and tons of seasonal offerings. And recently, they actually just took home the gold medal at the U.S. Open Beer Championships for their Double Hop IPA. If you would like to get your hands on some, you can save 15% by using the code ADVENTURE at athleticbrewing.com. Athletic Brewing, the best tasting way to keep your promises. And I also want to thank our sponsor, CS Instant Coffee, for making this show happen. They make 100% Arabica Instant Coffee. They use compostable packaging, and each package makes about 20 ounces of coffee. So I'll take one of those with me on an overnight trip, and it makes two pretty good-sized cups of coffee. And it's an awesome feeling knowing I can just throw that in my backpack, find some hot water, and I'm good to go. Save 20% by using the code ADVENTURE at csinstant.coffee. So be between uh, inline skating across Europe and then uh, bicycling on a tandem bicycle, as well as ocean rowing, uh, w w which of the sports do you find most challenging and which do you, do you enjoy the most personally? Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's like asking uh, <laughs> who of <laughs> children. Depends on the day, <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoyed all of those disciplines, if I can call it like this. But uh, 
But I, I do love mountains. I do love ocean and uh, all nature is just beautiful. And if I just change the the means of transportation, I, I, I can't I can't say that oh the bicycling was the best or 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 uh, roller skiing was the best. Each of those journeys had something in in it. Which uh, which attract me and uh, some I definitely want to do some other roller skiing trip maybe some some time in the future I definitely want to have more bike touring in the future right now I'm dreaming about climbing some mountains too sometime because that's what I haven't done for a couple of years already so so with each leg of this journey. You you know you have a set amount of time, and then you have to go back home uh, to, to to make more money and to to save save some stuff, and also spread the word about what you're doing. But the overall goal is to circumnavigate the world by human power alone. Correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I know that on your show there was a, a gentleman, Erden Eruch, and uh, there is another gentleman, uh, Jason Lewis. Uh, those both are uh, inspiration to me, as well Colin Angus, who have circumnavigated the uh, Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, there are a couple of those uh, human-powered circumnavigators out there. Just really few, but uh, I know some of the guys who are now on the road. That's the idea, to go all around the world just using human power, no motor, no sail, so any means of transportation like bicycling, I don't know, like uh, roller skiing or uh, walking, rowing, kayaking, that's all good. <laughs> as long as you you make a distance uh, just by your own. And that's kind of, I think, also some inspiration from like mountaineering uh, th- there is because I sunk uh, the, the, this inspiration from the old style climbers who climbed like big mountains, 8,000 meter peaks uh, in Himalaya without uh, supp- supplement oxygen. So without uh, uh, any support because that's kind of, I think it's a kind of a cheating because if your body can go up to six and a half thousand meters, uh, then that's your level. If you can go higher, seven thousand, seven and a half, uh, that's your level. And if you can climb eight thousand meter peak on your own without uh, artificial oxygen, that's what you can do. And uh, so I think some inspiration from that too. And that's why I think this human power thing uh, attract me so much so yeah okay and, and so what kind of are the big pieces of what's left for the circumnavigation around the world i know you are currently on your way to australia uh then what, what what's your plan then and then what's kind of after that as well well uh i found out that uh, my plan is to, <laughs> has been changed already maybe some nine times or something because some conditions change some uh, options change and and also you have to take in account the weather seasons my plan was to go to australia now but uh when i was approaching papua new guinea the winds in salomon sea blew me north northwest and i'm so high now in uh, png so i think no that's definitely i i am not about to go to australia now i am about to go to asia it's uh, about 2500 nautical miles to mainland asia now from my location in madang so i will take course of uh, just uh, slightly north and more west so northwest i will to reach mainland Asia. Where I'm going to end up, it's difficult to say whether it will be Malaysia, Vietnam, China. I can't say now. And that's, a, and that's a, uh, I think, a fun of it. And, and that's also interesting for the followers to, to, f- to follow this journey because uh, the waters in front of me now haven't been rowed before with this kind of ocean rowing boat. There have been a, quite a few uh, ocean crossings from North America to Australia, from South America to Australia. But those waters in front of me now, they, there's no, no historical uh, rows there. So 
I don't know, to be honest, to, do, to say precisely where I'm going to end up because uh, the weather will change uh, in the middle of uh, November, uh, second part of November. The wind will change in uh, s- uh, South China Sea. I, I don't know yet, but it's, uh, uh, there is the, that thrill, that, um, I don't know, magnet, uh, that, uh, that unknown, and that really calls me out to go and experience all that so (laughs) wow now did you mention that you're married oh no i am not married no and uh, i thought you mentioned wife (laughs) well uh i think there is a time for a a family in my life in the future and i like uh, now i found out those families who travel around the world with the sailing boats and i met uh, those guys in french polynesia in uh, Tuvalu Islands, I was just so inspired by them. And I think maybe that's something what I would like to experience with my future family, like to come back to those places where I have been with the rowing boat, maybe to come back the, the, the second time with the sailing boat, with the, with the, with the family, and uh, to create great experiences for, for my family and children. But that's in the future. I, I don't know. It's, it's somewhere in the future. Yeah, looking forward to uh, some day. <laughs> right. We just had a family on the show that, that rose... Uh... Well, they're a brand new family, a newborn baby on the boat, and they've been on the ocean traveling for eleven years on a sailboat all around oh, the world. Oh wow, that's that's amazing! Actually, check it out. It was it was last week's episode. All right, I have to download new episodes because uh, I found out uh, about your show when I was in French Polynesia. I download all of the episodes and you can imagine as i'm rowing 12 hours a day there is enough time to listen to all of them and some of them even twice <laughs> so yeah that's awesome and and there's uh, i remember on those on these uh, um earlier episodes where uh, kurt or travis is saying that oh we are creating this to to get you going like uh, to get you out there or to get you going if you are already out there and I'm rowing there a Pacific and I'm like, yeah, I'm already out there and that's a good fuel. And it helps you keep going. <laughs> that's great. Uh, thanks for the show. It's amazing. I just uh, got so, so much inspiration from, from your episodes. So really love the show. <laughs> wow. Well, it's people like you that give us something to talk about, you know? It's people out there doing it that makes, you know makes the person sitting at the office at 25, 28, 30, 35, whatever age they are and say, you know, I'm tired of this. I want to do something with my life. And I don't have to, it doesn't have to be, you know, 10 years straight. It can be what you're doing, doing it in sections for many, many months at a time, coming home, seeing family, raising money, and then continuing out. It can be whatever you want it to be. You know, it doesn't have to, that's, that's the beauty about hearing from all these people is uh, there's so many different ways people are having adventures. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's the thing uh, that, because uh, as I, I like to say that there is a, you know, as humans, we, we have like 55 or 65% of us are water. So any water in the world will end up in the ocean. So we are kind of part of uh, ocean. So we have our own oceans to row. So any one of us. So whether it's a big trip or just a weekend journey, uh, just you just need to get out and, and have some fun. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Get out and have some fun. So, so tell us... Uh, Tell us what what's one of your favorite stories about may, maybe this most recent row from Peru to PNG or even from the bike trip before. Uh, what, what's something that sticks out of your mind as a, as a story that helps people inspire people to get out there? Well, uh, these uh, well, for example, this journey now from Peru to uh, Papua New Guinea. It's been already uh, one year and one month when I'm on this journey. Three months I have spent on islands and uh, the rest of the time is... So yeah, I've been in my ocean rowing boat for 10 months 
and uh, that's just amazing because I encountered so so wild and so unique nature that it's just I don't know when I approach Hiva Oa Island in uh, Marquesas uh, that's in French Polynesia after 140 days you know uh, I'm a man uh, 30 uh, 34 years old and I was just by looking on the landscape, what I saw, these uh, mountains of that island and those cliffs and those green fields, I was just crying. That was just so, so uh, beautiful that I was crying because of the beauty of a landscape. And uh, I don't remember in my life that before that someone, uh, so something could touch me so deeply inside that, that even uh, you know the uh, I, st I start to start to cry. It's it's just uh, mind blowing for me uh, because that kind of beauty of nature is it's so so unique. We just we just uh, don't see that in a day to day life. I was out there like 140 days. All that was uh, all the time filtering through me. All all this beautiful ocean. Uh, all these encounters with the whales, with sharks, with dolphins, with turtles, with birds, all that was uh, was something like a fuel to move on to just uh, that's 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 uh, my inspiration and uh, and I found this that uh, all that just charged me so much that uh, i I just can't live without it to because there there have been so many like uh, uh encounters with the wildlife with animals i i can't even uh, find the one one story to tell because all of that was so so amazing that uh, at some point the dolphins uh, come closer to my boat sometimes time they they are r r very like quick visitors just for a couple of minutes and then they are gone but uh, there was once when uh, they stayed for uh, maybe 40 minutes or one hour and just uh, just flipping around the boat and uh, they were about, I don't know, something around 20 of them. And I, I could uh, film them underwater, how they play, how they talk with each other with their with their voices it's just so amazing yeah <laughs> so 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 there's more interaction with animals that is out there than than someone who's never done this probably realizes yeah and and um so a lot of a lot of encounters with the wildlife with animals some time to time some some sharks uh approach the boat uh sometimes they are they are like, <laughs> like just i don't know the names of those sharks unfortunately i, I don't recognize uh, uh them but uh, but uh sometimes to time they are aggressive sometimes time not and sometimes they hit the boat uh with such a force that the sound which uh, i hear in the cabin is it's so loud that i think wow it was it was like like someone uh, hit with the uh, with the brick you know because uh, and I, and then i think oh, oh there is uh, 6 millimeters marine plywood which separates me from this uh, from the shark or this 6 millimeters marine plywood which separates me from 5 6 7 kilometers depth of the ocean but at the same time, oh my I, feel, I feel very safe in my boat. I feel very safe in my boat. So it's amazing. It's just amazing. Those sunrises, sunsets, and sometimes ocean is like calm as like a, like a desktop. And it's really calm waters. Sometimes it's big waves. There, we, there was actually one accident on this trip. I broke my oar and uh, that was uh, because the boat was almost flipped from one side uh, one uh, one nasty wave almost flipped the boat but I I managed to balance it but uh, at the at the same time why well, yeah one of my carbon one of six my carbon <laughs> oars gave out and uh, 
I'm happy to have the, the spare ones. That is crazy. Do you, do you get lonely just being out there on the boat by yourself, especially because you weren't originally planning on it? Well, uh, yeah, but at the same time, I don't feel lonely. I don't know. I Maybe that's because I have a small audiobook library with me. I have listened to some like 100, no, more than that, almost 200 books on this trip. Wow. And also, that's the food for my brain. And also, of course, the the podcasts and sometimes i don't listen to anything and i just row and i just enjoy the sound of the waves the sound of the wind the sound of the birds and i just uh, yeah and i just enjoy uh, so i think everything depends on your decision if you think that oh i might get <laughs> you know, I'm, i might lose my mind on this trip you will lose your mind definitely, but uh, I I choose to enjoy. I choose to have fun. I choose to, you know, in the uh, registration papers of my boat, it's written it's pleasure vessel. <laughs> so I I treat pleasure vessel. <laughs> yeah, pleasure vessel. No, for for each kind of uh, boat, there is uh, the, the the type of the boat like cargo or a passenger ship or uh, or yacht or like and my boat is a pleasure vessel so uh, <laughs> yeah so that's how i treat my kind of ideas about how this trip should look like and how it will play out so i always look forward that uh, it's going to be fun i am going to enjoy it and whatever comes, I I can create my own space uh, in the middle of uh, rough seas to be calm, because there's no other way. You know, <laughs> otherwise, yeah, you you might lose your mind. Because sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes during the night when you sleep, uh, well, most of the times you drift positively uh, to the west, to the right direction. But sometimes I've been blown back, maybe a day, sometimes two days. So then you wake up in the morning and, well, yeah, you continue, you know. If you just start to uh, complain about situation, how does that help to, to solve that? So, Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I guess if you weren't just naturally or, or chose to be just so, so positive, you, you couldn't do something like this. It, it almost requires that you be immensely positive about anything that happens because I can imagine there have been plenty of things that have happened, especially in this last part that, that, that caused you to maybe question, should I be doing this? Uh, may, maybe I'm wrong. Could you, could you answer that? So regarding the, the change or the situations, uh, yeah, I'm sometimes, uh, worried when my health, when there is some problems with my health. So I'm not a doctor, uh, but, uh, I I try to cure myself the, with the solutions what I have on the boat. And those situations are a bit tricky because then I'm worried that would I be able to continue. But, uh, you know, I always believe that I am in the right place because uh, I choose to do that. And I don't think I question myself so much like, is that the right thing? what i have to do i i i really like um i'm sure that it is the right thing and that's that's how i help myself to also to to move forward i think and and i think it's important to say that uh, i uh, have heard so from for example from other adventurers who see their adventures a bit differently for example, I see all from this uh, bright side and from the positive side. But I have, I have heard from some adventures that they see that they are like fighting against the uh, obstacles or that they are like pushing through. But I can't uh, recognize myself into this kind of mm, attitude. I found myself as a... You know, in a, in a martial arts, I'm not a professional, but in a martial arts, if someone pushes you, you pull. You don't push back. Mm. You use a free energy. And I always try to use that free energy. If, if someone is pulling me, I don't. Sometimes you have to understand that you don't push back. You pull. And with that pull, you gain more. 
yeah, that's that's a kind of a way of, of thinking about these kind of obstacles. But also, uh, you know, I, I'm not a like woo-woo guy. I wake up every morning, <laughs> do my thing, you know. I, I row for 12 hours a day. I'm not just sitting in the boat and I'm like, oh, the ocean will push me there and I will just uh, just drip there. No, I wake up and uh, do my thing, and, uh, <laughs> you know. And and then at the same at the same time there are some miracles who when when they happen they they happen and uh, and then then you are very grateful for that 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 nature helps you that ocean allowed you to cross the ocean that mountain allowed you to climb there you don't conquer there I hate that <laughs> I just uh, oh conquering yeah I do too yeah uh, it's uh, that's yeah, you can't conquer any any kind of mountain or any kind of ocean. You're just a, a small drop in that. So you're very grateful that ocean or mountain allows you to be there and allows you to climb, allows you to row across. Mm, yeah, that's that's I guess the mindset which helped me a lot to get where I am now. I am a bit more than halfway around the world now. Wow, I, and. Man, I just wanted to go back to that word of wisdom about using the free energy. That is, I've never, I've heard that, but I've never thought to apply it really outside of martial arts, but that is an incredible word of wisdom, you know? Uh, yeah. Like, what a what a great way to handle these random situations in life, and especially the situations that you faced. I mean, you know, if, if you just like i don't know it's just i don't know that really struck me that's really good really good advice i'm gonna write that down all right cool yeah uh we first encountered that uh, when we were approaching uh, rio de janeiro in 2016 because we were everything was against us like we were uh instead of 100 days that was the day 141 Instead of uh, getting there by the Olympic Games, we were like one month after Olympics. Our bodies were covered by by boils. Uh, my friend had the broken ribs, and the wind and the stream. Everything was against us. We did and tried everything to to get to the shore, and there was like only twenty kilometers to get to the shore. But we we just couldn't. And and that moment, I thought to myself, well, if it's not meant to happen, it's not going to happen. But we have done everything, everything in our uh, what is in our forces to uh, to do, and in our abilities to change the situation. We really have to kind of uh, look forward for a miracle to happen, you know. And uh, after a couple of hours. Uh, because actually I switched off the GPS at that time. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't watch that we are drifting back and back uh, uh, in, into the ocean. Uh, and uh, that was already, we were, we were circling there about like one and a half weeks close to Rio. Uh, we couldn't make the distance, which, was, which you could make in two days. But we were there already one and a half to, to trying to somehow getting closer and closer and and we were just throwing back and back into the ocean and and then in one moment the stream and the wind or something started to turn and started to turn more and then more and then more and then it was not pushing me uh, us against but pulling us to the coast but different coast not the one we have planned but the different one and we just understood whatever we will go whatever coast we can we can find you know uh, right. because before some guys uh, send us the information that oh don't go to the beach they it's the they can arrest you we don't care like we oh, let's be <laughs> arrest but but we will be on the shore because it's 142 days already and we were just heading into the beach and and then the final moments at the uh, like the last uh, hour we saw a small, not a yacht club, but that was just a fisherman's boat harbor or kind of where where we end up. And we, yeah, we end up 
uh, without using any toe or nobody pull it us there, but we just use it, that, uh, that free energy, that kind of a miracle which happened at the right moment. But up to that, we did everything what was in our forces. So, yeah. So when you when you go back home or when when you take a when you get done with one part of the trip and and you go back home what what is that like to be there and what what do people around you say you know is it hard to connect with people after after an experience like what you just had you know I I'm kind of easy going guy I think <laughs> because when I get back <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. I found myself uh, back into the to the life of uh, like a city. Uh, well, the capital of Latvia is like six hundred thousand uh, inhabitants, so that's not like uh, millions and millions of people. But I have my friends there who who support me. I have my family who support me. Yeah, I'm 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 lucky man to have them on my side, and uh, they always. Uh, they always uh, try to help me with anything what they can, uh, whether that's uh, supporting with the with the hosting of web page or whether it's uh, uh, some advice or something or some logistic issues what I have to solve. I don't know. I when I get back, there is things to do. Like uh, I I put the story together. Uh, then I can go around schools to share my to share my experience and to maybe inspire them to do whatever they plan to do in their lives. So that's uh, that's one part of what well, this board of borders project. Uh, what I can help to some somebody else. And the other thing is that with each stage, I try to help to some charity, and that's what we haven't talked about. And I, I can uh, tell just a little bit more about this because yeah, this this absolutely. part this part now across the Pacific it's called grow together. It's row together and grow together. So I invite uh, people to row with me like virtually and uh, donate uh, like uh, how much in dollars? It's like seven dollars per per kilometer. Uh, to donate uh, and all funds go to a foundation who helps families to adopt children uh, from orphanages so the idea is that all children can grow up in a family and that's why uh, grow together so (laughs) that's kind of uh, how this uh, rowing and growing together is playing uh, playing a common role and if I can take someone with me in my boat, like virtually, or just uh, as an idea, as I'm helping to this uh, charity foundation, then I'm just happy to, to uh, so they can jump on board. Have you heard from anybody about hearing about your adventure and them starting to do something or them getting involved? And have there anyone ever reached out to you saying how much you've inspired them? You know, I haven't heard like uh, some uh, somebody. Hmm, that's a good question. I'm just wondering who. Well, I have heard, of course, some people who who are following the journey. They say that yeah, it's really inspiring, and uh, that uh, it somehow gives them a chance to see their lives and their challenges from a different point of view. There have been some friends of mine who told me that uh, when they think about my journeys and my challenges, they sh- uh, that's kind of shake them up and, oh, but he's out there, like completely alone in the middle of nowhere. And, and I'm here in the uh, in, in, uh, city and, do, and, and, and complaining about this or that. But, uh, and there, therefore, they are inspired uh, to cope with their challenges. Maybe that's not like an outdoor challenge or kind of adventure challenge, but just day-to-day uh, life maybe. And that's where I also get inspiration from them afterwards, you know, because... Uh, by sharing this all inspiration with our friends, families, and people around us, it's just uh, how it all goes on and uh, just fuels by themselves, you know, free energy again, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, wow. You know, I know you can't talk, you, or I know you you might not know exactly what the future holds, uh, but but what are you thinking it's turning into, knowing that you're not going to go down to Australia? Uh, what do you foresee in this next step of the, the route, being halfway through the trip? All right. Well, uh, yeah, I know that I will finish, uh, I will end up in Namibia, uh, Luderlitz port. That's, that's the, when I, when I'm, uh, I don't know, might take me maybe two years or, uh, yeah, uh, at least two years, I think, uh, because I, I'm, uh, as I said, I'm doing this by stages, so I have to count in the time when I'm back in my country, but, the next stage just from here to reach mainland Asia, it will be very interesting for, for me because it's not like, it's not like the middle of the ocean where the trade winds and the streams are very stable. And most of the times, like just the every day is no, they, the wind blows the same. The stream is the same and you just row, 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 row. But here it will be completely different because uh, as I'm closer to the shore, as I'm closer to some islands and there will be a lot of islands in front of me, uh, between me and Asia, there will be some very, very funny things, I think, with my road because, because the wind and the streams will dictate me uh, their rules and I just have to take them in account and uh, and pull as best as I can <laughs> so that's that's just this next uh, three months uh, three to like 90 to 100 days I assume it might take me to get to Asia from uh, Madang in PNG and then afterwards uh, I think well, I know that uh, then I uh, then I make a, a short stop there, the trip, because I fly back home at least for a couple of months, so definitely to to again to restart the budget <laughs> and myself to to see my family and my friends, and and then I I go back to Asia, uh, and I think bicycle is maybe the next uh, type of transport i will use but let's say up to now uh, it's not so clear the the, the further journey because uh, it again might change in a in a few months uh, depending or uh, depending on where i will end up uh, with the boat the main goal now is um, mainland asia continent where i can continue with the bicycle so uh, let's see how it goes, and maybe we can make uh, some other story when I when I'm in Asia or or when I have some updates about the journey. Because this is what I decided like a couple of years ago. That's the journey of like for a life adventure which lasts the lifetime. So, I, I mean, I just am speechless. Your your ability to be flexible and your ability to say, you know, th despite mince things, mince plans changing. You're able to continue on, and yeah, you say you know it's not exactly how you wanted to it when you set out, but you know you, I don't know that because I still see that you you're doing the trip and you're still out there having an adventure, and it's just incredibly impressive, oh. and uh, it's just awesome to see someone with such a great attitude making their way around the world and having just I can't even imagine how many adventures along the way. Oh man, and I'm so glad that uh, I have this opportunity to share all this joy and all these amazing things what I have encountered. And uh, I am inspired by the stories, and I just I'm so happy to share my journey. So uh, thanks, thanks for you to to have this opportunity to uh, to share all this journey with all of the listeners and all of those adventures out there <laughs> who are who are now out there and listening to this so it's so cool my my last question is how can people follow you and and how can they keep up with what you're doing so yeah the the right uh, the best uh, place to follow the journey is board of borders on facebook or the same board of borders uh, dot com there is a section of uh, location 
where every four hours when I'm in the ocean, there is new new location point. And uh, basically, that's that's how I track my route around the, the world. So I'm on Instagram too. But while, me, while I'm in the ocean, it's really difficult to post something on Instagram. I can imagine. I just send, that's the board of borders, the same, uh, the same name there. While I'm in the ocean, I send just text messages from phone to my friend who is uh, helping me with posts uh, on facebook so uh facebook is the is the central part um, where it's yeah all, all the news are there it's people like you that make this show possible so you know we we just provide a platform for you to talk and you you guys are the stars of this show and, and i just appreciate you being on and i'm excited to be following you and, and when you're done we're absolutely going to talk to you uh, when you complete the journey, um, or whatever it becomes, you know, who knows what, what might change by then. So, yeah, well, I have, to be honest, I have some fun ideas where this journey might take me. And it's like, uh, maybe it's not right now, the right time to share those ideas, but I will definitely share with you. And then let's see if we can, uh, uh, make some new story. Yeah, looking forward to 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 share the adventure because this is happening now, guys. This is happening now, just just now. <laughs> That's so you cool. You are on the trip. It is very amazing. Ah, oh, well, you know, we talk to people that you know maybe their trip was ten, twenty years ago, but you're you're doing it. You're out. You're there right this second. So that is uh, that's very impressive. And so, uh, Carlos, man, I really appreciate you being on. Um, Please be safe. Have uh, have fun. I know you're going to enjoy it so much. But um, yeah, man, we're looking forward to hearing from you again. Yeah, guys. Thanks a lot. You're awesome. All right. You are too. All right, man. Talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. All right. See ya. Well, first of all, thank you so much for listening to this episode. It really means the world to us that you want to spend your time with us. If you'd like to help us further, please just leave us a review on iTunes, share us on social media, tell your friends about us. You can become a patron, a supporter of the show for $5 a month at patreon.com slash adventure sports podcast. And if you know somebody that would make a good guest, reach out. We're always looking for good adventure and outdoor stories. And lastly, thank you to our sponsors whose messages follow right now. Athletic Brewing makes the best non-alcoholic craft beer. Go to their website at athleticbrewing.com and use the code in our show notes to save 15% on your first order. After all this adventure talk, if you're needing some gear yourself, but you need some advice before buying, go to backpacktribe.com where you can ask questions to the owners who have experience with all the gear as well as all of it for sale right there on their website. 